Yes? Nice. <laughs> I think it's recording now. For this one, we have to find a difference of quotients. So I'm going to do it in two different parts. I'm going to start by plugging in x plus h, this in here, into the function. So we're going to start by doing that. x plus h. So that was gonna, if that is gonna be equals to four, open parenthesis, x plus h, close parenthesis, square plus three, open, x plus h, close minus five. Every time we have a parenthesis with an exponent two, that means we have two parentheses they are the same. So we have to do FOIL in there. So that means we have x plus h, x plus h, plus 3. I'm going to distribute the 3 here. So we have 3x plus 3h minus 5. Now I'm going to distribute, I'm going to do FOIL. x times x, x squared x times h is going to give me x h and then here it's going to be x times h times x I'm going to do this in order and then h times h which is going to give me h squared I'm going to bring everything down just to keep it organized ah, I forgot a parenthesis is the parenthesis right here, close it. So inside the parenthesis, I'm going to combine the like terms, which is going to be the x h. I'm going to rewrite everything just to keep everything organized on track. So I have 2 x h plus h squared plus 3 x plus 3 h. Nothing in common here, so we can now combine. Now I'm going to distribute the 4 in every single term. term. So I have 4x squared plus 3xh plus um, 4h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 5. Trying to combine like terms. Um, anything is in common. So that is going to be just the first part. Now we have to do, remember the formula? The difference of quotient is this um, x plus h minus f of x, right? Divided by h. So what we did was this first part. Now we're going to subtract the original function from. So this one, now we're going to subtract the original function, so for that we have to do the negative and we have to open parentheses. And we write the original which is 4x squared plus 3x minus 5. The first thing that we need to do is to distribute that negative sign to every single term inside the parentheses. So if I distribute that, I'm going to rewrite everything to keep it organized. a squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 5, and now it's going to be negative 4x squared. Negative and a positive is going to give me negative 3x, and negative and a negative give me a positive 5. All of that is over h. Now we're going to cancel the 
terms that we can is going to be 4x squared minus 4x squared positive 3x with negative 3x negative 5 with a 5 and we have at the end ax h plus 4h squared plus 3h all of these over h as a common factor we have h so we can pull that out so we're going to have h open parentheses ax plus 4h plus 3 all this is over h and the h cancel with the h and our final answer is going to be ax plus 4h plus 3 You got the same? Okay. Do you understand this problem? I do. Um, so in part, when it comes to putting in uh, uh, x plus mm -hmm. so sometimes we get a little bit The very first step, the very first step, because we need to subtract the function with x plus h minus the original one. So to make it easier, I only work first the x plus h. So I'm going to substitute every x of my original function by x plus h. Then I'm going to subtract to that the original function. Right. You understand now? Yeah, that's kind of tricky because it's a lot of steps to it. And it's long, yeah. Let me know when you're ready so we can go to number two. Okay. Question number two, we have to find the domain. Remember when we're looking for the domain, we have two big restrictions to it. One is when we have an square root because we cannot have negative numbers. That will give me a 2i, right? An imaginary number. And we're looking for real numbers. So we're going to look for what number will make the square root to be negative so we don't use those numbers. And when we have a fraction will be the other case. When we have a fraction, we have to figure out which number will make the denominator zero so we don't use that number because our denominator cannot be zero because it will be undefined. So in this case, we have a fraction. So what we do, we take the denominator, rewrite it, and equals that to zero. So we're going to find out what will make that to be zero. We solve for this by adding 108 in both sides of the equal sign. Cancel. Now we have 3x squared equals to 108. And we're going to divide by 3 both sizes, 3 cancel, and we have x squared equals to 36. Now we're going to use the square root method, so we have plus minus, so the 2 cancel with this, and we have that x is equals to negative 6 and positive 6. So that means our answer cannot be negative 6 or 6. One of the two, of both of them will make the denominator to be 0. So how to give that answer? In set builder notation, we always open a curly bracket, x such as x cannot equal to negative 6, 6, close the curly bracket. And if we do the interval notation, think about your number line. This is zero, in here is six, and here it's positive six. So imagine that your graph is coming all the way from here, but you cannot use negative six. You keep on going all the way until six, but you cannot use six, and you keep on going to the positive infinity, and it's coming from the negative infinity. 
So if you want to put that into um, interval notation, you have to use negative infinity, parenthesis, right? Comma is going to go on to negative 6, parenthesis, because you cannot include the value. It cannot be used with a union of from the same negative 6 all the way until 6. Not including the values because that will make it 0 with a union of 6 all the way until positive infinity. Question number three. Find the range. Okay, remember the range is going to be your y-axis, right? That means all your possible values for your y-axis. So as you look at your graph, what is the lowest point? It's going to be right at negative two, right? So you always have to write in the... Um, the range or the domain from the lowest to the highest number. And then if you look on the top, you don't have a point where it's ending. So we are assuming it's an arrow and it's going to keep on going up forever. So we're going to start from negative 2. The value is included until the positive infinity parenthesis. That will be an interval notation. If they ask you for the domain, uh, the range in um, set builder notation, Always remember it's the range, and we're looking to the y-axis. So you're going to start y, such as y has to be greater or equals to negative 2. You close the curly bracket. Be careful because normally we get confused and we tend to write x in there. <laughs> Good. Next. Question number four. Okay. Product of the function. When they're talking about product, it's a multiplication. And you notice the dot in between the F and the G is a closed dot. When you have an open one, that means you're going to put G into the excess of the F. But this one is different. It's a multiplication. So that means that I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to rewrite both of the functions in parentheses. So I know they have to foil. Foil meaning I'm going to multiply these two and the second one by the other two. So I have um, two, negative 2 times 3 is going to give me negative 6. And add the exponents of uh, x, so it's going to be uh, x to the 7th. And then 3 times the negative 5 is going to give me negative 15 x to the 4th. And then I have a negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8 x cubed. And then a negative 20. I cannot combine like terms because none of them are alike. So that will be your answer. So that's the product of F and G. Good with that one? Okay. Question number five. Determine algebraical whether the function is even or odd. To find or neither. To find if the, the function is even, we're going to replace the x's by a negative x. After we solve it, is we go back to the original one, that means it is even. So I have two negative x to the eighth. That's an eighth plus negative x 
raised to the sixth power. What happens is every time we have an exponent that is even, the negative is going to go away. Because negative and a negative is going to give me positive. So at the end, it's going to go back to the original one. If you don't go back to the original one, you can check for odd. And that will mean changing the y for negative y. If you go back to the original function after you multiply negative through the whole function, that will mean it's odd. If it doesn't go back, that means it's neither. You want to look at it? Do you want to see an example? Okay, I have here. This is question number five. Okay. For an odd we need to do this first, right? What we did substitute the uh, x is for negative x and then the y for negative a for uh, for negative negative y. Mm. And a picture for an even one will be this. And an odd example of the graph would be this one. I found one example for and um, for art. So if we have a function of x, negative six x to the fifth power plus 3x cubed plus 7x. 
So first we're going to substitute the x's by negative x. When we have odd exponents, it's going to stay negative. The x inside is going to stay negative. So this 10 is going to be negative times a negative. It's going to give me a positive 6x to the fifth power. And here the same thing is going to happen. Positive times a negative is going to give me negative. Let me raise that positive. Negative 3x cubed. And here, negative and a positive is going to give me negative 7x. So it didn't go back to the original one, right, after we fix it. So now we're going to make the y negative. Remember that that symbol just means y, the f of x. That means exactly y. So I'm not looking, I'm not solving for negative y or for y, right? So to fix it, I'm going to multiply everything by negative. So negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. And then here, negative times a positive is going to give me negative. Here is going to give me negative and negative positive. And the same thing is going to happen here. Negative times a negative is going to give me a positive 7x. And that went back to the original one. So that means it's odd. So first you do even. It doesn't work, so you do odd. It goes back to the original one. That means it's even. If it doesn't go back to the original one, you will say it's neither. Okay. Now that will be good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, next one. It will be... Question six, where is increasing? They're only asking for increasing. We're gonna go increasing and decreasing because why not? So increasing, you have to look at your x value only. So if you notice from here, it's coming down, right? And from here, it starts going up until here. So, but you're only going to look at the x value. So, x value here is going to be one, more or less, almost 1.5, right? A little more than that. So, we want to say the 1.6 maybe. Until looking only at the x axis, right? The x value, this will be zero. So, from negative one, I forgot the negative. Negative 1.6 until 0 is increasing. You can see that? Okay, that will be until 0. And then here is decreasing, but again, from here is the same number, right here, until goes to the positive infinity. Because this is keep on going, increasing. So the other point is going to be from positive 1.6, more or less, until the positive infinity. That is increasing. And just for the fun of it, we're gonna go. We're gonna do the decreasing one. So we are decreasing from negative infinity, right? Until negative 1.6, and from zero, we're gonna be decreasing until positive 1.6. I just picked the number that I thought was the closest to whatever the point is at. That is clear? Okay. Question number seven. Find the local maximum, if any. The difference between the local and the absolute maximum is when you will have something like this. And you have a point here where it's really like a stator by, you can see the point, right? And you have a curve and another curve and that just, just keep on going forever. So you have a 
a high point, I'm going to call it a high point in here, but you have a maximum point. So this will be the maximum, the absolute maximum, but you have a local maximum. So that is what is happening here. You have some, some coins up and down, but you have a local. So that local, um, write the answer using function notation. The function notation. When they talk about the function notation, they just don't want the point. Um, we're going to get the point anyways. It's negative 6 for x, right? Remember, this is x and this is your y. So for x, it's going to be negative 6, comma, and this is all the way until 3. Just to get the point down so we can see it. And the other one is uh, 3 again and negative 2. So negative 2, 3. But they have one, the function notation. So function notation, you have to do your function. The x value goes inside the parentheses. So negative 6. And the y value is 3. So the function notation, again, negative 2 for the x value and 3 for the y. That is okay? Okay. So question number eight. Find the average rate of change for three to five. From three to five. So remember, the average rate of change is the same as the slope. We just call it in a fancy way and they want the fancy notation for, for, for everything now. So, 3 is my x1 and 5 is my x2. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the function and I'm going to find the y value for each one. So 3 is 2 and inside the parentheses 3 raised to the second power 3 times 3. So that is going to give me 3 times 3 is 9 plus 3 times 3, 9, and keep this organized. So 2 times 8, times 9 is 18, plus 9. Did I do that right? So 27, okay. Now I'm going to do for 5, the same thing. I'm going to replace all the x values. 5 raised to the second power. 3 times 5. So f of 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 5 is 15. And I have here. Uh, 2 times 25 is 50, plus 15, that is equals to 65. So they want the answer given as f of 5 minus f of 3. So that is um, 5 minus 3, and this is equals to what? 65 minus 27 over 2. That is 30A divided by 2 equals to 19. Remember the slope formula when you have n equals y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1? That's what we're doing with the fancy symbols. Can you relate to it? No. Are you good with that one? Are you sure? That one is kind of tricky. Yes. 
to the eye, but it's the same thing. Okay. No, the graph function below. Okay. I love this one. This Y. So we have, I'm going to break it down. We have a function of X that is equal to 2X negative 4. And we have a restriction. We only want the values of X that are less than 3. So when they give you a restriction like that, what you need to do is find values that are less than 3. So we're going to make a box. So I'm going to start from the value, the restriction is 3. And less than, I'm going to do 2 and 1, just to keep it easy. Even I can do 1 and 0, easier. So if I replace 3 in here, I'm going to have 2 times 3, 6, minus 4, 2. So it's 2, 3, minus 4 equals 2, 2. And in here I have 2, and I'm going to replace the x by 1, minus 4. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 4 is going to be a negative 2, so here it's going to be a negative 2. And if I replace the x by 0, this goes away and it's going to be a negative 4. Ah. Stop working. Um, let me remember how you do this again. Okay. I'm going to do again the 1. So x, 2 times 1, negative 4. So 2 times 1 is 2. It's negative 2. Um, if I replace the x by 0, this cancel, negative 4. So it's going to be negative 4. So I have three points. So if I go here to the graph, I'm going to start in 3, 2. 3 for x, which is right here, and 2 is here. And up to the symbol, the inequality symbol is going to be a close, an open dot. So this is going to be an open dot. And then the next point is going to be, oh, I think I write it here. One, negative two, mm, nice. Negative four, and this is a two. So one, two. I have one. Oh, one negative two right here. And the other one we don't see it, so we know it's gonna go this way. And it's keep on going in that direction. Now the other function is f of x equals to 3 and the restriction goes when x is greater or equals to 3. So when we have only a number, we're going to say y equals 1, right? And we have a graph. That means I have to go to my y-axis, and in one, I make an horizontal horizontal line. That is what is happening in here. It's only one value. So I'm going to go to 3, and I'm going to graph it right there. Uh, but they only want the numbers that are greater than 3, equals or greater than 3, so here. And this is going to be a closed circle because of the symbol, the inequality, that is equals to. So from here, I'm going to go greater. So I'm going to go to the right. No, no, that was, I was just finding where 3 was at. Because it's not there, the graph goes by 2s. Thank you.
Questions on that one? Yeah. Question number 10. Based on the graph below, describe the transformation of the function and write down the function using f of x notation. Okay, because of the shape, I know it has to be the cubic because it looks something like this, right? So if that is the original one, I can tell that this one, where it should go through the origin, is one, one, two, three, three points down. And also, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna start with that one, but I know this is going three points down, but it's being moved to shift to the left, right? How many? Five. It's going by one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's going by one, five, six, seven, eight. So it's been shift, shifted to the left eight units. So you know when we are on the x-axis, it is contralogic, right? If they told you that it's shifted eight units to the left, that means it's going to be a positive eight because it's contralogic. So we're going to take the function and we're going to start by saying that it's a cubic one, right? Then the first thing that they did, the first transformation that they did was to add A and to say that it was affecting a straight forward to the X. We're going to put in parentheses together and we're going to put the three outside the parentheses. Because we're anything that is in the grouping symbol right next to the x is affecting straightforward the x and it's going to be moving right and left. Now, the next step, we're going to say that it was moved down by three units. So f of x, parentheses x plus a cubed, and it's going to be negative three. So that should be the transformation. That should be the function for, from, for that graph. Good. Okay. Question 11. Find the function after the following transformation are applied to. So they're giving us the function, the original one, which is a cubic function. The graph is shifted left units, and shifted left for units. So left is going to be to the y and uh, to the x, and it has to be with the x in here. So I'm going to open a parenthesis, x left, so it's going to be a negative four and three shifted up three units so we're going to add three and finally reflect it across the y-axis remember when you look for the x-intercept and the y-intercept when you're looking for the y-intercept you will change the x to be zero it's kind of the same thing because this one is being reflected across the y-axis you're going to change the x the x is going to be negative it's kind of the same idea when one is being reflected it's going to be affected the opposite one If it was reflected across the x-axis, we'll put the negative outside the parentheses. Uh -huh.
<laughs> yeah, the difference is going to be the location of a negative sign. But they're talking about function, so my very last step would be to make the Y as a function symbol. That will be the sign of touch. Good with that one? Okay. Horizontal shift. The horizontal shift is going to be on the x axis. Hmm. Give me just a second. Okay, that is going to be X. When something is being added or subtracted to the X, it's straightforward. Vertical is going to be the Y. It's going to be a straightforward on the Y. Horizontal stretch or compress. Okay, for this one, I have that one X. When something is uh, being alter is multiply the the x value so x the number has to be less than 1 it will be compressed better know it's going down vertical stretch or compress chun chun Vertical is everything that happens to the Y, right? Greater than one. And this one is going to be, the value has to be between zero. The A value has to be between zero and one. This one will be good if you take notes on it. Horizontal, this is a horizontal stretch. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. I like my notes better than the ones that were given. So, if I have a horizontal. Compress. B has to be greater than one. If I have a horizontal, and I'm going to explain this in a second. Horizontal a stretch. B has to be between zero and one. A vertical compress. It has to be between zero and one, and a vertical a stretch it has to be a. It has to be greater than one. An example of each one, I want to give you vertical compress. Change compresses here. Half of X. A vertical stretch to 
x. The number that is outside, remember in the problem before that you asked me, what is this? Will be it will be the y, right? It will be reflected across the y. Uh, the x, I'm sorry. So the y is the one that's going to be changed, right? So the same thing. Is the vertical is stretched? Is vertically, right? It means up and down. This one is going to be affected. The, whatever is outside is not going to be directly touching the x. It's going to be right outside because it's the y-axis. And horizontal is talking about going right and left, right? So the number is going to be right next to the x. And the stretch is going to be stretch horizontal. Stretch. Uh -huh. I knew I wrote down the wrong one. It's 1 over 2, and this one will be 2x. Horizontal stretch. Now I got it. The difference between the horizontal and the vertical is the position is inside or is outside. For horizontal, because we're talking about the x axis, it's going to be the number that you uh, multiplying or dividing by, it's going to be right next to the x. And vertical is going to be where the position of the y should be, the alteration for the y. And mirror over y has to be changed to negative y and mirror over the y at the give it a mention here. Suppose that revenue are in dollars from selling X books in hundreds is okay. We have the function for the revenue. Which is for X. The cost in C in dollars of selling books X. Is C so we have the function of the cost. 0 0.25 x squared plus 4x plus 200. So we have to find the profit function. So profit is the uh, revenue, which is the money coming in, minus the cost. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract both of the functions. So revenue is 40x minus the cost, which is 0 0.25 x squared plus 4x plus 200. First step will be to distribute that negative sign. So 
I have 40x minus 0.25x squared minus 4x minus 200. Combine like terms, that will be this 40x and minus 4x. So I'm going to have a negative 0.25x squared plus 36x minus 200. That will be the function, the revenue function. Now they're asking us to find what is the profit if 10 books are sold. Provide an explanation of the meaning of the P10. So if we have, if we sell, um, oh, that's not revenue, that's profit. I'm sorry, I messed up the letter. With that should be a P for profit. A P for profit, and here a P. This should be a P. So P of 10. So we're going to use that formula, that function, but we're going to substitute all our x's for 10. 0, 25, type parent 10, the square, plus 36, times 10, minus 200. So you can put that in your calculator. So we'll get here a negative 25 plus 360 minus 200. If I add and subtract, I will get 135. So the explanation for that is you sell 20, if you sell 10 books, you will make as a profit $135. Next problem, 13. You're good with that one? Yeah, they want to know you understand what in the world happened in, in there. So P is your profit. So after you subtract all the costs for the books, you earn um, $135. Something, yeah, to explain what is that. Talk Mobile offer a monthly cellular phone plan for $40. It includes 200 anytime minutes and 1.25 cents per minute for additional minutes. Then following, the following piecewise function is used to compute the monthly cost of a customer. Where so is the cost in total, in the total cost and x in the number of minutes. So first they're asking us to find the cost for 100 minutes. Because x is minutes. x equals 10 minutes. <coughs> the base plan is $40 and it's up to 200 minutes, right? So because the 100 minutes is in between 0 here and 200, 
the cost of 100 minutes is going to be $40. This is in between the range of 0 and 200. And now the second part is asking to find the cost when we spend 300 minutes. So the function for that is point zero point twenty-five x minus 10. That I got it from here, from the function. So if I replace uh, the x for 300, it will be 0 0.25, 300 minus 10. So 25 times 300, it's going to be 75. Seventy five minus ten, which is equal to sixty five. So the cost will be sixty five dollars if I use three hundred minutes. If they ask for explanation for that, that will be the explanation. Questions? The rule part is kind of confusing. You want to see a, a, an example of each one? For the rules, the. I know that part is confusing. Uh huh. Okay, I'm going to start for the horizontal shift. So if the graph is given y equals to x squared, this will find an easy one, right? So x squared, we know that it's going to be a parabola, right? And if they ask you to give the function for a da y equals x squared that is being shifted three units to the right, what you would do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, right? It will be right here, and three. But how you would do the function? What you would do to it? Uh huh. Every time you are in the x axis, so that means moving right or left, it's going to be contra logic. They say you're right, so you're going to use a negative sign. So that will be x minus 3. And you have to put the square here on the top. Because we want that number that you're using to move right there next to with the x. That will be for horizontal. And if we do a vertical shift, mm -hmm. 
We're going to use the same one. Just to keep it simple because this one is a really common one and easy to, to change, to make the transformation with. So we have the parabola. And this time I'm asking you to, to, uh, to shift uh, four units down. Uh-huh. This one will go negative. So it will be one, two, three, four, negative four. So it will go down here. And the function, what you will do to it. Just add a negative four right next to it. And that will be. Which one is the next one in here? Uh, a horizontal stretch. I know those are uh, those are the confusing one. Uh, I'm gonna find an example for that one. Okay, horizontal. The stretch. Uh huh. It's the same. We're gonna do the y, x square. Is we stretch it by a factor of four? That means we have to, up to my rules, the ones that I wrote there. The number has to be right there next to it. So that should be You're gonna say we I stretch it by a factor of four and shift it. Shift. Shift it down three units. We're going to do 4 right here with the x and negative 3. Just because we want to make sure that that factor that is being stretched by is right there next to the x, is with the x. And this is what it will happen. It will go 1, 2, 3. It will be the original one, original, will be that one, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine that it's going through the region. I'm not good on drawing. <laughs> and then when you do the stretching and going down, it's going to go... Uh, if you say that it's going to be a stretching vertically, it will be like pulling, but it's a stretching horizontally. This is going to be online in a link where you can, are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was trying to tell oh. me, no. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's horizontally compressed. Oh my God. This. Horizontal compressed. Look at the notes that I did. Compression. Compression. Horizontal compress. Um, horizontal compress. Horizontal compress. 
Um, vertical stretch. Let me go for it. Okay. Gonna do vertical. Vertical compress and a stretch. So I'm gonna do both in one. So we're gonna say the original one is gonna be the blue. I'm gonna pretend that it went right through the region. And then in red, we can do the um, horizontal stretch. So this one is the horizontal stretch. Oh, I was doing vertical. Yeah. Well, I'm going to finish this one. Black. I'm going to...